South Africa's new police minister has had 100 days to try and outdo his very unpopular predecessor. Let us get his report card from Action Society's Yonita Dupria. Welcome, Yonita. Thank you very much for the opportunity to discuss the things that uh, lie close to our hearts. Well, I don't think anybody envies the minister who has to outdo the previous police minister. But how do you think he has done if you had to give him a, a symbol, A, B, C? It is very difficult to, after 100 days, to, to give a symbol. Um, but we'll give him a preliminary <laughs> report um, because we are seeing very good things. Um, he, we hear of Operation Chanela that's doing well and, and people are being arrested all the time. Um, we, it, it seems like there's a, there's a buzz, there's something going on. Um, he's not just, I, I, in fact, I haven't seen him at one funeral um, like his predecessor. <laughs> so, um, uh, of course, he should have respect for the, for the people who lose their lives. But that was actually the almost the only thing that we saw Becky Tseli do and then saying outrageous things. So we are um, very excited to see where he goes um, from our connections. Some people who work closely with him, they also have good things to say about him. Um, things that we are excited to hear about through the grapevine is that he is really um, taking on the senior management of police. And that is what Action Society has been saying all along. Um, it, the, the problem lies not with the dedicated police officers who's doing their work on ground level. They are doing their work. They really want to do their work. It's the resources that's the problem and the, the caseload that is the problem. Um, but he, uh, so we have been saying that uh, look at senior level of the, the um, police service, because that's where the problem lies. People claiming big fat salaries and they are not actually doing what they are supposed to do and, for, and doing the best for the people working below them. Okay, so you'll give him a pass. We'll give him a pass for now. Um, we are seeing a light in the tunnel, so that's already better than, than what we had. However, the Minister of Justice has had uh, a rather dramatic first 100 days in office, how would you rate her? Yes, um, we're not so excited. And the, the problem, what we see um, also on ground level, uh, and that is where we work, um, uh, cases were always on the court rolls for long times, but it seems like it is even longer now. Um, so the, um, for example, we have cases that is on the quarter or since the incident happened, it's been three and a half years. And what we see now is people just go to court. Uh, they take days off their work. Um, they have to get transport money to be there. And then the case is just postponed. There's not even any progress um, in the case moving forward. It's, it's just appear postponed because the the court rolls are so full that's what what we are what we are told and what we see as well um, but then shouldn't there be more courts shouldn't there be longer working hours because we also see sometimes um, there's always the lunch hour there's always the tea hour there's always chai laying at three o'clock um, shouldn't that be? Shouldn't courts maybe continue longer? Shouldn't there be magistrates, magistrates and judges working longer hours to get through the caseloads? In America, we have night court. So <laughs> why why should we not have this in South Africa? Because there's obviously a problem. How can it be that that justice is not swift? And in this case, it moves at a snail's pace. Um, people reliving that trauma again and again and again and and nothing is happening. So, so that's just the court part. And then the um, what I already touched on, the magistrates and the judges, we know that there are also problems with their remuneration. Um, they, they, they offer a really wonderful service. It's, it's necessary. And um, they should be um, paid what, what they should be paid, what they are worth. Um, and, and that goes for the, the prosecutors as well. Give them what they are owed. Um, make sure that they have good working conditions. Make sure that they can do their job without being in a situation where 
they cannot feed their family because their pay is not good enough. So maybe they take a, something under the table because if you have to choose between feeding your family and fairness, I don't know. Can we really? I, I won't do it, <laughs> but but it, you might think about it. So that is a problem that we that, that could occur. Well, she's also been fighting um, the VBS alleged links. So you haven't seen an improvement there. So she's not getting a, an early promise sticker or an early promise star, is she? No, no, we're not. We're not handing out gold stars for her. And and um, I know it is a big job, but it is uh, why in other portfolios do we see big moves and we see it not in an important, very important portfolio like that of justice. Now, meanwhile, the Auditor General has presented his report on the South African Police Force to Parliament's uh, Portfolio Committee on Police. What are the most shocking and concerning findings in his report, Junita? Well, for for us, uh, sadly, it was not shocking, um, or it let me rather say it wasn't surprising. It is still shocking, um, but it is something that we've been saying since Action Society started. Um, one of the things is that the the ten triple one number um, is is not working as it should. Um, it takes between eight and thirty five minutes um, for them to answer the the phone um, if it is answered, um, and then uh, that agrees with the surveys that we've done under normal South Africans, where they say they would rather call a private company, a private security firm, or the neighborhood watch um, anybody but the police because they know they will get a response. Um, and it, it's, it is actually so sad because the police now you have to pay extra to have somebody to protect you in, in an, an emergency. If it takes between 8 and 35 minutes just to answer the call, then you're going to be dead. Um, by that time, you're not going to get help. <laughs> then they will come out maybe a day or two later and do the fingerprinting and so on, sadly. Um, so that was <laughs> at the crime scene. Um, so that was um, shocking or disappointing. Um, we know that they are testing in Medrand, which is the biggest call center for the 10111 number. They have a testing to, to improve it. So we do hope that sooner rather than later we will see good results uh, and that that people will start building their trust in the police again and and in the 10111 number um some of the other things that we were um or something that i can say that we were um impressed with and i'm saying that <laughs> cautiously um is that the the buckle sample um crime database that they it, it wasn't as behind it, it was still not 100 percent but but there's been big strides in that and that is wonderful because now we know that when um offenders go uh, on a certain schedule goes into the or are arrested into into jail um they have a, the cheek swap which is the buckle sample and it's put on a database and then we can link them to other crimes um it if there's reoffenses, so probably it will stop them from reoffending because they can be linked to anything else they do in future. The, the, the sad part is that it's only from a certain time and it's only for certain um, schedules of, of crimes. Uh, hopefully it can be, it would be ideal if anybody gets arrested. You take a buckle sample, put them in the database, and then you can see start seeing a trend, and then we can stop crimes from happening, or, or more serious crimes from happening, because um, they, they will be on a database, and you can link them to, to whatever other crimes they, they were involved with. So we, we are cautiously optimistic and, and happy, satisfied with, with that um, progress that's been made. Um, some of the other things were... Um, the detectives, and we've been speaking about this so long, even though um, there were many police officers employed on the ground um, after, well, sometimes just a three-month training, sometimes they go through a, a bit of a longer training, but at least the visibility um, part is there. But the problem is the experience is not there, the detectives aren't there. So now you have people who haven't done it with a mentor, uh, they are supposed to do the job, and in any job, 
never the, never mind as important as protecting people's lives, you need to work with a mentor because you can learn it um, from somebody in theory, but doing the job is something completely different. And um, that's why we feel the mentorship is so important. Again, coming back to why are there not more experienced people staying in the police? because of the way they are, hand, uh, they are treated, because of the caseloads that they have, because we, the, the senior management is not taking care of the people below them. That's very important. And we really want to always praise the people on the ground who is doing their jobs. We are not praising the ones on top who aren't doing their work and, and making it difficult for the ones at, uh, on the bottom to do their work. Um, so the detectives, um, you do need experience. To, to be a detective. And now we have them just going out working, and that was also in the Auditor General's report, um, we have them leaving the service to go and work for private companies. Um, who can blame them? Because then they don't have to work on 300, 400 cases. It is humanly impossible for one person to work on as many cases. And, and a case is not solved in one day. So you don't you will have to solve a case in every single day of the year if you work 24 um, seven, it is, it is impossible. Um, so we are very disappointed um, in that. And, and we hope that the police could maybe uh, find a way to bring back the talent that's, that's been leaving to uh, be mentors, to teach the young ones coming in, to tell, uh, show them how it works because it's detective services also with the network that you know. The, the, you can't just go in cold and people will speak to you and give you information. You need the training. You need the mentorship. Um, you need the years of experience to really do the job properly on your own. Um, so, yes, the, we are, we, we're not very satisfied with the rate of detectives leaving and uh, the caseloads that they have to deal with because it affects all South Africans. And it must be putting extra pressure on you guys at Action Society because more and more people must be turning to you because they're not getting official help. Definitely. In the cases, also in the cases that we are investigating, we see so many times um, where it goes to court and then the NPA says or the prosecutor says um, there are so many queries outstanding, send it back for further investigation. Then it's delayed again. Then we have to wait, I don't, months and months again for the case to, for them to further investigate. And that should have been there when it went to court. It, it shouldn't be sent back and delayed and delayed and delayed because evidence also don't last forever and um, people disappear fingerprints get worked over um, if if you don't do it right from the start it is it is not going to be as easy or easy <laughs> when you when you try to do it a month or two afterwards exactly and you are providing support in many big cases is there one you would particularly like to mention today well, we, uh, it, is, it is actually so, so nice um, to finally uh, or, or to have cases which are finally concluding. Um, we are excited every time um, that it, a case progresses to trial um, and because then we can see, okay, something is happening. But in some cases, it's, it's still continuing. Um, we had a, a case and it's, it's actually bittersweet and I, I don't know if you have to laugh about the absurdity but we were so happy with the Mickey Anton case um, I, it was about a month ago or two months ago when her um, her, her case concluded from when the incident happened when she was murdered um, to where they were sentenced the two guys who, who murdered her and the, uh, so we were wow that's a record time we were excited about 11 months um, but the only reason it was only 11 months is because they pled guilty. So there was no trial. It, they, but it, even if they plead guilty, it takes 11 months for them to go to court. So, but, but we are happy when a case progresses. It's not as swift as we want to, but it, but it does progress. It makes space for new other cases to come, into, come onto the court role and to uh, to bring them justice. So that was Miki Ontong. Um, we have some some other cases also um, in this uh, in next week. We have um, trials starting in two cases. 
Um, so we we are happy when I, I don't want to even specify one. It's just we are happy when we see the progress in any case that we, we take on because um, it is important for everybody to get justice when they are wronged. Uh, and so we, we're just happy when we see the progress. And obviously, when we see a conviction, we are even more happy. Thank you. Thank you. That was Ioannita Dupria of Action Society, speaking to Biz News about the challenges in the fight against crime and getting justice. Thank you so much, Ioannita. And I'm Christine. Mm-hmm.